Joining us now is Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. He is a member of the Judiciary Committee who has been involved in the Supreme Court confirmation hearings. Uh, Senator Whitehouse, first on this story from the New York Times, a lot of your focus overall has been about the intersection of money and politics. Here is the White House reportedly saying something differently publicly than what economic advisors are saying behind closed doors. Your take. Yeah, absolutely. Every voter in America needs to understand that while President Trump was telling all of us that they had the coronavirus under control, his administration was meeting secretly with big investors and letting them know that it was much worse. In effect, the public was being lied to directly by the president while big Republican donors were being given the straight scoop. If that's not enough to get people to the voting booth, I don't know what is. Any thought uh, of investigating this? What should be the ramifications? Well, I think there's going to be some looking into this, but uh, not on the Senate side, because on the Senate side, the uh, gavels are all controlled by Republicans who don't dare cross with Trump on anything, never have. They just roll over for the Trump administration every single time. It's, uh, <laughs> I call it the spines of foam moment for the Republican Party. You obviously have been deeply involved with the confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Um, one of the things that has been the major focus for Democrats, I think we can agree, has been health care and the future Correct. of Obamacare. Correct. We got a sense, I think, yesterday from Senator Graham and also Judge Barrett trying to make the case that maybe, maybe the Supreme Court won't rule to overturn Obamacare in a month because of this issue of severability, the idea that you can take certain parts out of the law without throwing out the whole thing. Let me just play a little bit of sound there. If there's one provision within the statute that's unconstitutional, the question is whether that one section can simply be rendered null and excised from the statute, severed, or whether that provision is so central to the statute that its unconstitutionality, like once it's pulled out, the whole house of cards collapses. And the presumption is always in favor of severability. Would it be further true that if you can preserve a statute, you try to, to the extent possible? That is true. Okay, that's the law, folks. He has filed a brief to overturn the whole thing. So the Trump administration wants to throw out the whole thing. However, Senator Graham and Judge Barrett both seem to be giving body language to suggest that they don't support such a thing. Your take? Yeah, I think they would love to get out of the predicament that they're in. The Republican Party platform says that it wants to reverse the Obamacare cases. The president has tweeted that he wants to terminate health coverage under uh, Obamacare, all of the signals out of the administration and the big donors behind this process are that she is intended to be a judicial torpedo aimed at people's health care. But at the same time, a lot of Republicans, four of them on the Senate Judiciary Committee, are facing voters right now who think that's a terrible idea. So they're torn between what their party's policy is and what their voters want to hear. And I think that was Chairman Graham trying to create a little daylight so that Senator Tillis and Senator Ernst and himself and Senator Cornyn can go home to their states and try to create some impression with voters that there's not such a risk here. By all signs, the committee will vote out this confirmation over uh, in a week, and then the full Senate will vote on it, and Judge Barrett will be confirmed to the Supreme Court. My question yeah. to you is, what, uh, look, that's what it looks like is going to happen. I know nothing is done until it's done, but Senator Whitehouse, what consideration have you done to how you think you should govern and legislate going forward with a court that looks like it will be a 6-3 conservative court. How will that affect the way that you do your job? Well, I think what we need to do is take a good look at some of the mischief that is going on at and around the Supreme Court. Uh, all of the three last nominees have had very significant procedural peculiarities about their appointments. Um, this has all the signals of a political power grab. There's a record of the court's decisions in partisan five to four cases, 80 to zero, uh, favoring big Republican donor interests. 
This is a court that doesn't operate under a code of ethics and that is the worst discloser of gifts and hospitality and travel of any of the major offices, worse than the circuit courts, worse than Congress, worse than the cabinet. So I think we need to understand really what the problem is at the court. I think we're in for a long uh, set of issues related to the Supreme Court. The Republicans basically have compromised the integrity of the court in order to fashion a court that will rule for their big donor interests. Look, and we need to look into that and figure out how to respond. I look, I'd settle for cameras inside so we can actually see with our own eyes how... That would be an easy one. ...how one branch of government does... It's even more important to know, for instance, when somebody comes in to file an amicus brief, who's paying for them. Um, Senator Whitehouse, Mitch McConnell uh, says he is going to put on the floor. This is a targeted relief bill. It is not anything close to the bill that the House and House Democrats passed five months ago, but it's $500 billion in relief to the American people. Um, and Mitch McConnell is going to put it on the floor. It, it may be the last chance to get any relief money to the American people over the next week, um, or next few weeks, I should say, before Election Day. How do you explain to Rhode Island voters who may need money your vote on this? Well, I think this is probably a cynical political strategy by Mitch McConnell to give his troubled senators who are facing the voters now uh, something to say that they voted for. Um, there is a chance that if it clears the Senate, um, then real negotiations will begin to take place with the House and a serious bill uh, can emerge. But I cannot go to my Rhode Island voters and say to them, we helped this little group of people, but we didn't help these people, and we didn't help you, and we didn't help the state with its uh, terrible, cruel budget problems brought on by this coronavirus. This is the ultimate picking winners and losers, which is what uh, Mitch McConnell usually says he's against. So it looks like a ploy to me. If it turns into something real, then we'll be very interested. Senator Whitehouse, I appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to be with you.